Good morning, this is Sunny Harris, and I'm talking for Timing Research this morning. Thank you very much, David. And we're talking today about commodities and cannabis, and I'm talking about the outlook for those things. First, I'm going to tell you that uh, this is the disclaimer. Uh, this is all for educational purposes. I do not give trading advice. Uh, everything I do here is hypothetical and for entertainment and educational purposes only. I am a mathematician. I have written five books on trading and am now working on my sixth, Trading 101, Trading 102, Electronic Day Trading 101, Getting Started in Trading and Trade Station Made Easy. And I'm now working on the most complex one I've done, Trade Station Easy Language, Object-Oriented Easy Language, Made Easy, Object-Oriented Programming with Sam Tennis, who's the author of Ask Mr. Easy Language. And Sam also is the author of Trade Station and Easy Language itself, not the book, but the program. My credentials are I've been trading for over 40 years now. I am a mathematician by training, education, and a programmer by application. And uh, I already so told you, I wrote five books so far, working on six, seven, if you count the one I work, wrote with Murray Ruggiero, who has since passed, uh, using Easy Language 9. Point, uh, X, I think it's called, 9.x. And I published a magazine for eight years called Traders Catalog and Resource Guide. There are still copies of it floating around out there in the universe. I've done a lot of international speaking about trading. I love to mentor and educate people who are learning about trading, want to get into it, or people who are already into it and want to get better at it. I've uh, gotten several awards, Reader's Awards from Technical Analysis of Stocks and Commodities Magazine for uh, solving the puzzle. I'm gonna, I've got hyperlinks in this talk and I am going to click on some of the hyperlinks and bring them up so you can see what I'm talking about. And you can't click on them today, but you can click on them when uh, it's posted, when the recording is posted. So solving the puzzle, there's a virtual education class on my website. You can see moneymentor.com and on the website you can sign up for the class or at least see what it is I teach and you need to learn. And I do private consulting for people. So there's that link. And here are the books, Using Easy Language 9.x with Murray, who was probably the greatest mind in the trading industry. And here comes the new one. I was rated number one trader for two years. My trading company was Warwick International with 365% that year and 178% the next year. To do this, I was using my Sunny Bands indicator and my dynamic moving average, which I will show you in a few minutes. And that's really all I use for my trading. Uh, for anything and everything I trade, any time frame. And a little more, I've been consistently rated top 10 consultants by technical analysis of stocks in the Fidelis magazine. You can see that. And this is, makes me a little shy, but it says, Manny said, Sunny will save any student of trading an enormous amount of time, money, and above all, frustration. She combines an encyclopedic knowledge of trading systems, mathematics, and software with a master teacher's ability to focus on exactly what's relevant to the student. She combines all this skill with a personal, warm, and friendly manner that is rare in any teaching situation. Uh, I've read close to 400 books on technical analysis and fundamental analysis and options and trading of all kinds. So that's what I bring to the table when you uh, consult with me or uh, ask me to program for you or whatever. Um, you want to do, that's what I bring to the table is the knowledge of oh, close to 400 books. And Chip said his, she's part Einstein, part Will Rogers. She's absolutely brilliant. The next quote on the by Chip on the quips and quotes page on Money Mentor, uh, and I don't see where it is right here, but he's, he said, thank you, not a losing trade all, yeah, here, you're still a genius, not a single losing trade all week, Chip. 
and that's where it is on the money meter. So I see the world in numbers. Uh, I don't know if that's why I'm a mathematician or I'm a mathematician because I do that, but therefore I'm a purely technical analyst. I'm and a purely technical trader. This is how I trade in my own real life. I do not rely on news reports, newsletters, that kind of thing at all. I do not rely on fundamentals and everything I need to know is in the chart. That's my view. I do publish a free Sunday night newsletter called Sunny Side of the Street and you just opt in at moneymentor.com. There's the Sunny Side of the Street, free. Uh, and then this song is Sunny Side of the Street, imagine that. So if you want to get a free technical report every Sunday night, opt in at moneymentor.com. I also have a free live trading room, Real Money, Real Trading, Tuesday mornings, every Tuesday morning for an hour from 10 to 11 Pacific time, which is where I am, and 1 p.m. to 2 Eastern time. All you have to do is opt in and show up. I'll send out the Zoom link to you about 15 minutes before the show starts. And you can ask all the questions you want and see what I'm doing live. So you opt in right there at moneymentor.com. Trading room live. And this little picture over here on the right painting that it's a Leroy Neiman that I have in my living room wall. My flagship indicators are, and this is how I really trade, right here on this chart of Bitcoin. This is today's chart of Bitcoin. You can see that it comes right up to this horizontal line that I've drawn. We've got another one up at 63,000 where the high was. And if it breaks this today, I think we're going to go on up. So I've got sunny bands, which are the, it's the channel that goes around price, the green lines and inside that's a teal line. And in the very middle is a gold and purple line. I'll explain those to you in a few minutes. And then at the bottom, we have my dynamic moving average histogram which shows gold and then red and some more gold and then purple and green. And all these things mean something to me. And both of these things are something that I have programmed and have been using for years, including the years that I was rated number one. So there's the chart again. And this thing shows me everything I need to know. It shows me the ideal turning points. So I know when to buy and when to sell. It gives me the longer term direction. So I know what I'm looking at within the daily chart, or I, I typically trade on one and five minute charts. So uh, I go really fast, but I need to know the longer term direction when I am trading fast. So it tells me not only the longer term direction, but the current direction, ideal entry and exit points, and the size of the anticipated move is even in there. So I have profit and loss protection stop areas with sunny bands. And I've been using it for more than 30 years with no optimizing. Somebody asked me the other day, um, do you send me out optimized result, uh, updates every so often? And I said, no, I haven't optimized it in 30 years. So no, I, it, what, you, what you see is what you get and it works. And of course you can have these for your own. These three indicators are really all it is. All there is to it's three simple indicators. And now I have, programmed with Sam, uh, my five minute S&P trading strategy. So that's a brand new thing that's available. And you can click on that and go to products and services and there's everything I have right there. So the question you have to ask yourself is, do you really wanna trade? And should you answer these questions before you sign up as a trader? If you ask them all yes, then maybe you're gonna be a trader. Is it going to make you more money than working at McDonald's? If you're a losing trader, then you'd be better off working at McDonald's. If you're making five bucks an hour, you'd still be better off working at McDonald's. And I have an indicator called PHW. I just showed it to you a minute ago. It stands for potential hourly wage. And I like to know what is the potential of any chart that I'm looking at? What is the potential hourly wage that's on that chart? Is trading your passion? Do you want to do this more than anything else? And are you willing to devote yourself to it? If those are yes, then maybe you're a trader. Trading is an exciting business. And in fact, it's even more exciting when you're losing money because it generates more adrenaline when you're, when you're losing than it does when you're winning. So if you lose, then you try out 
revenge trading, which means you're going to make it back at all costs. You're going to make it back. But the problem with that is it's usually the all costs that happens. Trading is an independent way of making a living. You don't have to have employees. There's no boss except the market. There's no office politics. It's just you. And there's no office. You can even trade from a desk in your bedroom. It's just you in the market. So it's an independent way to work. But let's start for a second with the pragmatic approach to trading. To make a living trading, you must have a goal amount that you need to make per year. Uh, let's say it's 120 grand a year because that's an easy number to figure on and it's an adequate wage. If you divide that by 12 months, you need to make 10,000 a month. Now that seems kind of high right now when you just look at it that way. But if you divide that by four weeks, and I know I'm approximating, that's about $2,500 a week. I'm gonna divide it by 4.333. So you divide that by five days and you get $500 a day. That seems achievable. It's not so bad when you look at it that way. So $500 a day, maybe you're trading five contracts to the S&P, all you need to make is $100 in one trade or several trades and you're out, that's it. You made your money. This was uh, one of the real-time Tuesday morning uh, live trading rooms. We were watching this and this is what trading looks like to me. Keep watching. And we were short that, at that moment in time. And there it goes. Okay, so that's what real traders do. We watch, and, and you heard the sound on that? That's what I, a little indicator I call bean ticks. It makes a bean with, with every tick that goes up and a bong with every tick, tick that goes down and a click sound with every tick that goes sideways. So I hear not only the direction of the market without even looking at my charts, I know what the market's doing. And that's free. If you'd like it, just send me an email, sunny at moneymentor.com and tell me you'd like to have bean ticks. It'll drive your wife crazy, but uh, it, it really helps me trade. I not only hear the direction of the market, but how fast it's going. So in the night session, it goes really slowly. First thing in the morning and when it opens at 6.30 my time, it goes really fast. So Mark Twain said, if the stock market experts were so expert, they'd be buying stock, not selling advice. So when you choose a mentor, be sure that he or she is actually a trader. I've been trading since full time, since 1981. It's how I make my living. Trading is about knowing where to get in, where to get out if you're right, and where to get out if you're wrong. That's, that's it. That's as simple as it is. And that I owe to Joe Krutzinger. So let's look at Bitcoin today. It's been going up. You see it's got a little bit of a red uh, candle there, right at this level where it, I call this the, the uh, preponderance of the evidence. You see right across, can everybody, let's get a, a laser pointer here. See right across here how the preponderance of the evidence just comes straight across to there. It's this middle of this congested area. So it's going to have a hard time, I think, getting in through that. We've got one complex two going down, three weeks is going to take us up about where this laser pointer is now. In my opinion, in my humble opinion, as they say. So let's dissect my way of analysis. I'm looking at an, at an older contract. This is the previous contract because that's what I have all the charts up right now. But so you look at this, I look at this chart. This is a one minute S&P 500 contract. You look at this chart and there's not a lot of information. I mean, yes, you can see a bunch of bars, but I don't have a way of analyzing that yet, except by chart patterns, which are not my favorite thing. So I first draw what I call attractors on, and that's, they go through not necessarily the highs and lows, uh, not necessarily the wicks of the candles, but the, I like to draw things on the bodies of the candles. And uh, I, again, I draw it through the preponderance of the evidence. I look for confluence. So there's where I would draw attractors on this chart, okay? And you can see that. it's pretty obvious now when you've got attractors on there, let's get that laser printer up, down to the line, up, didn't make it, therefore it's going down again, up to the line again, down to the line, stumbles. I call this a stumble right here. And there we go. 
Now let's put Fibonacci retracements on, which I always do as well. That's on all my charts. And you know, I went from this high right here to this low. And you can see, look at that. It just pops right back up to that retracement line. What is this one? This is the, e yeah, this is the September E-mini. And they're on every chart I do. I also have a little indicator called pennant finder. So we look up for pennant formations, congestion areas, and that automatically calculates that and puts them on the charts. You can see when it's in your, these are indecision points. It shows you the line going down that forms the pennant. It shows you a red line on the top and the bottom so that if it breaks out below that, we're likely going down. If it breaks out above that, we're likely going up. So that's one of the things, the strategies that I look at is what are the pennants doing? And then here comes sunny bands. This is my main indicator. Um, in the middle of this, you see a gold and purple moving average. The nice thing about this is long time ago, I used my mathematical abilities to create a an, an moving average called my dynamic moving average that calculates its own inputs. So the reason I did that is because most moving averages will give you whipsaw. That means you catch a nice trend and then you give it all back. So this period, all of the way through here, all of this is whipsaw. So you catch a trend and then you give all your money back as you try to get long and short and long and short all at the wrong time. And that's what most moving averages will do to you. So I created this one that calculates its own inputs and adjusts itself to the market to try to avoid the whipsaw. So you'll see that one only has whipsaw right in this little period right in here. The rest of the time it's calling the direction correctly. The bands on either side, the green and the teal lines above the dynamic moving average and below the dynamic moving average are 1.2 average true ranges calculated based on that dynamic moving average. So it's where the, like, the likelihood of the market is. It's where it's likely to go is, I find to the top band and then bounces down and goes to the bottom band and then up to the top band again, it does that over and over again. So that's dynamic moving average with my sunny bands, Fibonacci and attractors. We've got one more thing and then we're done charting and then we can start trading. So this is at the bottom. This is a, a histogram. All this is called a histogram. And it shows the difference between the dynamic moving average, the gold and the purple lines. So the difference is plotted uh, on this scale. And you can see that the differences are not very high values there in the decimal area. And when it's gold, I'm long. When it's red, I'm short. When it's purple, I'm short. And when it goes green again, I'm long. I condition that with if and only if it makes a higher high when you're trying to go long or a lower low when you're trying to go short. So I don't just trade off of that histogram. I also have that condition on. So we can zoom into that chart and we can see where the signals are. You see here, let's, for instance, here, let's look right in the middle of the chart, purple, purple, purple. That means we've been short from over here. We've been short from there. We go down, 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 down. A gray also means it didn't go anywhere. Purple, purple, here it turns green. So on this signal bar, we look up at the chart and see, does the next bar make a higher high than the previous bar, than the signal bar? No, it doesn't. So we don't get long yet. That doesn't make a new high. That one doesn't make a new high. These don't make new highs, but this bar right here does make a new high. So at that point, we go long. Right over here, and, and we've got gold, so it confirms the long. When we get the red, yes, indeed, it does go lower, and we're out. My trading style is I day trade the E-mini. I swing trade stocks and ETFs, meaning I look for large turning points and I hold stocks until they get weak again and then I get rid of them. I do not short stocks. I do sh short the S&P all the time. In fact, it moves faster going down than it does going up. So I do love to short. Uh, with day trading, I 
exit all my trades at the end of the day. I don't hold positions overnight. And that's how I trade the E-mini. However, to me, the end of the day comes in two sections. So the ES trades from 6.30 a.m. California time to 2 p.m. And then it takes an hour off for lunch, I guess. And it opens again at 3 p.m. and trades for the next 23 hours. I don't stay up that whole time and trade, but I do trade from 6.30 a.m. until 7 p.m. And uh, it's a lot easier to do now that I have my strategy automated because it'll trade itself. Day trading looks like this to me. This is the chart that I look at. So on the, on the middle of it, we've got the sunny bands. I just showed you the dynamic histogram. Uh, I've taken off the Fibonacci lines so that it's a little clearer to look at. This automatically marks in green the long signal or in red the short signal on the bar. You don't take it until you get confirmation by a higher high for the longs and lower low for the shorts. And there you can see where it exits at the end of the day. On the right, we have Sam Tennis's data report pro, which tells me I'm long five units at that point in time. I've got two grand in the trade. Uh, Max loss was 312.50. It gives you all kinds of information, 52 week high and low, all kinds of information about the chart that you're looking at. He also has, that he programmed for me, a real time viewer that shows me, uh, I don't have it on right now, but it's under that little pull down thing. It also shows me the real time data on my chart. The net profit, this is the last 30 days that we're looking at. And the net profit for that is, what does it say? 83,937 for 30 days, trading five contracts. Not so bad. The explanation, now here's the chart again. And we look at the five minute E-mini. Uh, the blue and red bars, that's another indicator I have. The blue and red is the day session because I like to instantly look at a chart and know something. So I use a lot of colors so that I can know exactly what I'm looking at quickly without having to think. Because when I'm trading a five minute or a one minute chart, I don't have time to think about anything else but getting the trades right. So the blue and red bars show daytime session, the green and magenta bars show the nighttime session. So it's real easy for me to determine where I'm, what I'm looking at because the day session trades differently from the night session. I have the channel, the sunny bands on there. I have the golden, red, purple, and green lines, which are my dynamic moving average histogram, DMAH. Uh, the arrows show you my trading strategy. You can see where it gets in and goes long and short. And the performance there, I showed you the last 30 days is just over 83. It's up to 100 and something now for the last 30 days. I do a rolling 30 days. so. It's doing well. The SPGC on the left, Report Pro is on the left. That's Sam's report. And on the right is Data Report Pro. Uh, I, I find those to be invaluable for my trading. I do use rules. I, I don't like to trade without rules. I don't have, a, I mean, I do get feelings about the market, discretionary sort of feelings, but I'm not always right. So I trust my rules. If the DMA is green or gold, it's bullish. If it's purple or red, it's bearish. And these are my macro rules. Then if the price exceeds the price at the signal line, that's where I enter. I exit on a reversal or at a stop loss. I do have a stop loss of $750 in there. But most, for the most part, I'm just reversing. Short, long, short, long. And so far, I have it programmed for my five-minute E-mini trading strategy. I don't have it working on everything in the, in the world yet, but it's working on the five minute charts. Now to the commodities and cannabis part of the talk. These are the stocks that I've isolated to be associated with growing and distribution. I'm not familiar with all of them intimately. I, don't, I haven't been trading them, but I'll show you why in just a minute. Uh, I think the option professor probably told you everything you need to know about these. Uh, he, I think he knows everything. I think, see, I've been trading for 40 years and he knows at least twice as much as I know. So he must have been trading for 80 years. So there's even a cannabis conference coming up. Bazinga, Cannabis Capital Conference. 
New York City, incredible. And there's a spot index for cannabis. It's a Canada Cannabis Spot Index. So this is, it's, it's coming into its own. This is Aurora. And you can see, and, and the Austin Professor shows you these charts. I'm gonna show you them with sunny bands. And you can see that I've drawn the horizontal line here. This is my attractor. And the attractor uh, shows price to be underneath the tractor, heading back up, has not touched the upper outer sunny band yet. Because it has not test tested that yet, I am not sure which direction it's going and whether it's gonna break through that horizontal line. But we can see down here that the, that the DMAH signaled long right there. See, and price did go higher, so that's a long position. Um, long term, this stuff doesn't look so good to me. Seven dollars has been up above eighteen dollars when everybody got all excited, but um, it has to prove itself before I'm interested. It would have to go above that horizontal line. AFC Gamma, similar story, but not exactly. This is uh, a new stock since. Uh, it's only several months here that it's been open. Of course, most IPOs go way up and then way down after they're introduced, after excitement's over. Uh, and this one is above the horizontal line. So some promise. The reason that the sunny bands doesn't start until here is because there's not enough data yet to calculate it. It has to have this history in order to calculate the values in the sunny bands. Agrify. Here we've got a chart that's now again down below the horizontal line. The attractor signals to me that uh, it's going down and we're on purple down at the bottom. So DMAH shows short right from here. So that's the short position. But I, I again, I don't short stocks. So that would be an exit position at that point. Kronos, same story. Below the horizontal line, purple on the DMAH, no reason yet to buy. I would look at, a, uh, looking for entries, I would look at the weekly chart of these and see where that's positioned and then look at the daily chart for entries. And then we have some commodities. Corn, next chart, no inflation here. <laughs> she said sarcastically. You see this yellow box that I've got up at the top on price. You can see that it's gone up from 192 to 640. My goodness, and this is this is the COVID problem right here. So it goes down at the beginning of, of the COVID crash, and then it's just done nothing but climb, climb, climb. And you wonder why the food's more expensive. That's 200 to 600, that's huge. Soybeans, no inflation here either. Uh -huh. So we've got the same kind of box. We've got the same kind of congestion going up. That looks like a head and shoulders at the top to me in that box. So that's a possibility. If anything, it's a, it's, let's go back just one second. How do I go back? Let's see. If indeed that's a head and shoulders right there, the measurement typically is from here to here, that measurement's uh, 15 to 12, so 300 points looks that it, if, if it actually happens, that it'd be going down another 300 points. Head and shoulders, however, is probably the most failed pattern of all the technical analysis patterns. Even though they say it's a good predictor, I have not found it to be a good predictor. Another congestion on coffee. My coffee at Starbucks is getting even more expensive. I wonder what Starbucks is doing these days. I haven't looked lately. And then we've got back to Bitcoin here. We already talked about that, so we don't need to do that again. But um, yeah, that's the pattern I was looking for. That again, looks like another head and shoulders. Failed pattern. It's a complex head and shoulders up here at the top, goes down to here and back up. And then one would expect if it's a head and shoulders pattern it to fail downward. And we'll see in the next few weeks. So we go to Sonny Harris's Money Mentor Glossary, 
and we look up head and shoulders. Look at that. We've got a glossary in there that, that uh, lists all the words I could think of, and then we have to look for some more. So anytime you want to know what a pattern is or a technical analysis term is, just go to the glossary. This one is gold. Uh, the option professor talked about gold with you and looked at a monthly chart. This is a daily chart. And this one shows green on the DMAH out here at the end, right there. I'm expecting this. And we've got the attractors on the chart. Another complex head and shoulders, question mark, could be. And I'm at least looking for this close to $1,800 price. Uh, I think that gold's going to 2000. I don't know how soon, but I'm thinking that it will go back up there. So I'm gonna end a little early today, looks like. I'm gonna bring up the chart window, and I mean the chat window, excuse me. And we're gonna have questions. I hope we'll have some people have questions. So that's an overview of how I trade and how I analyze charts. I know it's different from a lot of other analysts, but that's what I do. Most of my trading is done on one and five minute charts on the E-mini. I use several forms of technical analysis. I am a technical analyst and I use TradeStation primarily for my software. And I love to teach beginners how to trade and veterans how to trade better. Uh, today's offers. I always offer something uh, discounted only, uh, only during these presentations. I normally do not discount anything. My services are a little expensive and that's because I actually trade. And if I can help you money, then I get part of it. Uh, any of my indicators today for the next week are 15% off. Indicators, strategies, and services, all 15% off. To, and obviously the trading room and sunny side of the street are not 15% off because they're free. So today through October 14th, so one week, we get that 15% discount. Just email me, send me your phone number. We'll talk and get that taken care of for you. And everything that I offer is software I've developed for my own trading. This is not a bunch of stuff that I program to sell to make money selling stuff. That's not what I do. I trade and I there's certain things that I need for my own trading. And then I thought, you know, might as well make these available for other people too. So there are things I use. Here's how you contact me. That's my cell phone. You can call me anytime. Uh, if I'm not awake yet, because you're calling from New York or London or something, I won't answer if I'm not awake. But, uh, well, Ralph Vince called me once from Abu Dhabi. It was three o'clock in the morning. I answered him. Um, so give me a call and we'll talk. I get up, I get up at five in the morning. I trade at 6.30 till seven o'clock at night. So you can call me and I don't mind being called on the weekends when I'm not trading. It actually makes it even better. You can email me, sunny at moneymentor.com, 24 hours a day. I live in San Diego, California. My website's moneymentor.com. I've mentioned that a few times. And now let's see if I can find the chat window so we can have some questions before my time's completely up. And there's no such thing as a stupid question. So David, maybe you can help me find the chat window. Uh, yeah, if you move your cursor around until you find the Zoom window, it's usually at the top or the bottom. Uh, or the Zoom menu, um, Zoom there'll menu. be a chat, um, or there will be a more button usually, and then chat oh, under see. that. I do see it, thank you, it's on the other monitor. Oh <laughs> yeah, yeah, that happens just much. Yeah, I've got three monitors going on here. That's, how often would you say, percent-wise, do you hit your stop loss? Uh, rarely, I very rarely hit the stop loss. I have it there because TradeStation has a rule about, uh, trading on margin, which you do are when you're trading the E-mini. Uh, and that is, you have to have a stop in place. So I put a stop in place. Their rule is it needs to be 32 points away from the market. 32 points is a, is a lot of points. 32 times 50 is what? A lot of points. 
So I do keep a $750 stop in there and it rarely gets hit. Thank you. Next one says, so if I subscribe, I can use your proprietary software to trade. <laughs> Thank you for that question, but no. Uh, you can, if you subscribe to the trading room, it's one hour a week on Tuesday mornings at 10 a.m. in California. Um, you can see what I'm doing, but the soft, the proprietary software that I have is for TradeStation or multi-charts and it's, it actually costs some. Let's go to, let's do this. Let's go to uh, more slideshow options. How do I get, uh, hang on one second. I'm gonna see if I, there. So if we go to money, how do I go to moneymentor.com? Mm -hmm. I know what I can do. Oh, um, you're sharing that specific window, so you'll have there. to stop the, sh oh, okay. Yeah, I got it. I Maybe just not. did a bunch of- Oh, you're text. sharing the whole monitor, Never mind. So if yeah. we go to products and services and we want to see uh, the DMAH, we just click on that and there it is in uh, line drawing form and here it is the histogram I showed you. If you click on buy now, you can see how much that costs. Click on the dynamic moving averages and they are as follows. So that's where you purchase things. And no, I don't give those for free with the free sign up. Sorry. Good question, but sorry. Um, do we have any more questions? Do you help with long-term investing along with day trading and swing trading? Absolutely. Very good question. Yes. I definitely do that. I like to trade stocks long term, and I'm happy to show you how I do that and what I'm looking at. And day trading and swing trading too, all those things. Thank you, RR. And we'll go back to this and are there no more questions? Then I'm gonna be done early here this morning, David. Thank you very much for your attendance. Thank you for coming, appreciate it. And to David and Anka for hosting. Do I trade options? No, I don't trade options. I used to trade options. I did that for about two years and I never made any money at it. And I, losing is not my favorite thing to do. So I don't trade options anymore. Larry Williams said to me once we were having lunch, he said, since you're a mathematician, I figure you've figured out how to trade options, haven't you? And I said, no, I can't trade options. Uh, only thing I know how to do is lose money trading options. And he said, well, thank goodness, because I can't trade them either. So Larry Williams is probably the best trader I've ever met. So he and I neither one trade options. And here again, I'm gonna give you my contact information and please get in contact. I love to talk to people. Trading is a lonely job when you're sitting in your office all day alone, watching the market. Thank you so much. Thank you, David.